Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Simply Soap and Water TV. I'm Terrell Lanford, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Simply Soap and Water. We're here with the legendary DJ Eddie F from Uptown Records, a legend in the game. And we come to you to share a little bit of information about a tribute we'll be doing to such a legend like DJ Eddie F. Would you like to say a few words to the people out there in Simply Soap and Water land? <laughs> Hey, what's up? What's up? How y'all doing? Um, we have an exciting product, um, a, a necessary product, uh, especially during these times. Um, simply soap and water. You wash your hands on the go. It's portable. You can put it in your uh, in your handbag, your backpack, your purse, in your pocket. Take it with you on the golf course. You're able to wash your hands wherever you are, uh, which is one of the main things that you can do to fight spread of germs, fight uh, COVID infection. And we have the perfect product for you to do that. Definitely. And so here's some of the product here. This is actually simply soap and water. We have soap on one side, water on the other. Then we have the hand towels for you to dry. And some of the cool thing that we have now is even for the ladies. We have pink. Kind of bring a little color splash there. You know, and this is the deluxe package where you have the Simply Soap and Water right here. That's the safety portion. And on the back, uh, this, this right here will be the hygiene portion, to be a matter of fact. And on the back, this will be the safety portion. All right. So we're bringing that to you. Eddie, I had a quick question. How did you get your start uh, in music? How did that go? Oh, man. Um, ooh. Started as a DJ. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I grew up in Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is right next to the Bronx, where hip hop started. Mm -hmm. um, it was founded by Cool Herc. Um, literally, I, I grew up literally 15, 20 minutes away from uh, Cedric, where um, Cool Herc lived. So um, as hip hop radiated out um, early on, you know, when I grew up, you know, you wanted to be, you either wanted to be a DJ, MC. Or you wanted to be, uh, you know, a break dancer. So I took a liking to the music, and I wanted to be a DJ. And I started DJing, uh, you know, just practicing um, at a young age. Then eventually started DJing, doing all my high school parties. Became the top DJ in um, in Westchester. And through that, um, a mutual friend, uh, actually Trouble T. Roy, R.I.P., introduced me to uh, to Heavy. And uh, he actually told me Heavy was trying to make a record at the time. And then we met, and when we got together, we just kind of, we clicked instantly. We became like best friends, like immediately we started hanging out every day. Um, and we started doing demos. And actually, funny thing, um, our original group of people uh, was myself, Heavy D, I'll be sure, wow. who I was friends with. Uh, and Al used to come with me to the parties, and he was just he was just part of the crew. He would come, he would help, you know, set up equipment, carry records. At the time, Al was a rapper. Al used to rap. Wow. And he was <laughs> rapping in the style of, um, in the style of Slick Rick okay. or Dana Dane. Um, and then another one of our friends, um, he introduced me to uh, Navelle Hodge, who actually became one of my um, main uh, co-producers. He played the keyboards. So, mm. so we had a kind of like a collective where. It was Heavy, Al, myself, and Navelle, and we used to make demos at the house. And um, after making a bunch of different demos, uh, you know, we decided we had something that we thought was viable, um, a good demo. And I used to read all the records, and uh, at that time, I think it was around the time Crush Group came out, all the top artists were at this company, uh, Rush Management. Wow. It was like Curtis Blow, Houdini, LL Cool J, Run DMC, um, not sure if the BC Boys are out, but all these artists were at this one management company. The only other artist that was big at that time was the Fat Boys, and they were at a different management, but they all were at this one company. So um, I said, we should go there and try and get a deal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, looked in the phone book and looked for Rush Management, got the number out of the phone book, 
he called and um, you know, he was the one who put on the you know, the deep bass voice is Albert <laughs> Brown and you know and he requested a meeting with uh Russell Simmons, you know, and they're like, Who is this? And, you know, Albert Brown and he's like, Who are you calling for? So, you know, they said, you know, he's not available, hung up the phone. Um have have said, uh, what what they say? He said, I right, they just, you know, they kinda just you know, they didn't know who I was. He like, We should go down there. So we were too young and crazy to know you can't just show up and get a meeting with <laughs> right. Russell Simmons. Right. So we wow. got um, we got directions from Troy's big brother Gary how to drive to the city, how to get to that. I think it was on 56th Street or something. So we drove down to the office, um, and we we had decided that Al and Heavy were going to be the spokespeople. Right. Me and Navelle were there, but we were kind of like playing it back. Um, so we walk in, they're like, who are you here? You know, it seems like, you know, we're here to meet with Russell Simmons. We want him to listen to our demo. They're like, you know, do you have an appointment? We're like, no. And we're like, well, you know, he's not here right now. We don't know if he was dead and he was lying or whatever, but um, whatever the case. Andre Harrell comes from the back, and I guess he was getting his messages or whatever. He was talking to the reception uh, woman and says, um, he says, you know, where you, who are y'all? And like, you know, we're like, you know, Hev's like, well, I'm Heavy D, this is Eddie F, this is, you know, Al, this is, you know, and, you know, we're here to play our demo for Russell Simmons. He's like, he's like, where y'all from? He's like, Mount Vernon. He's like, y'all came all the way down here from Mount Vernon? I think he thought Mount Vernon, there's another town called Mount Kisco that's like two hours from the city. So wow. I think he thought we were way from there. Yeah, it's so right. He's like, right on the spot. He's like, all right, let me hear what you got. Put your demo in. So um, he put the demo in, play the demo. He likes it. He likes the beat. He's like, okay, who made the track? He's like, you know, my DJ made the track. So he said, okay, I like it. He said, you know, but it was like, a, it was a DJ record. It was just talking about scratching and stuff like that. So he said, okay, you guys need to go back, make a record. I need y'all to come up with some concepts. Like talk about, you know, talk about relationships, talk about girls, talk about, you know, take me on a journey. So we went back and um, started making demos. And um, Heavy would call every day. And, you know, Heavy would call every day, try and get Andre on the phone. I would call Heavy, did you get him? You know, and probably it was about two or three months. Um, and at the time, we didn't know Andre was starting his own company. We That's didn't know that. That's so wow. uh, one day, Heavy says, I spoke to Andre. He wants to sign us to his new label. Um, and his new label was Uptown Records. That's when we did the compilation. We were all on the compilation. Our single became the first single of the compilation, which I actually um, did the drum tra tracks and co-produced. Uptown's Kicking It was the lead single with all of us on it. Um, I was co-producer on that, I did the drum tracks on that. And um, that's what launched the company, launched our career. And my, I'm the original college dropout. I was, um, <laughs> I, my last day, yeah, my yeah. last day of college as a freshman, was the day before we shot our first video for Mr. Big Star. Wow. And wow. then we turned into a hit. And then I was gone. Man, that's huge. You hear that, Simply Soap and Waterland? This is the essence of hip hop. Getting the story, they put in the work, um, understanding their craft, and, and, and they went out and believed in themselves and they went after their dreams. A group of friends just coming together in collaboration. So that's some tidbits. You, you, you know, you got some. Uh, a collective of friends out there, y'all get together, believe in yourself, and go after your dreams, and you can make a huge impact, uh, such as uh, Eddie F. Uh, another question I want to ask: uh, In Living Color, how did that come together? Um, man, you know what's funny? Nobody, I don't think I've ever been asked that question, <laughs> and it's actually an interesting story because that's you, just you, that's such a legendary show that everybody loves so check this out nobody knows this funny man <laughs> and this is actually exclusive great. everybody exclusive so heavy was friends with eddie murphy wow eddie murphy is you know obviously a comedian he's friends with all the other comedians and he was like you know keenan those guys were about to do a show mm -hmm. so basically eddie murphy tells keenan you should have heavy do the theme and then, so, shout out to Eddie Murphy for referring us to, <laughs> to do the theme for In Living Shout Color. out to Eddie. Um, 
and you know we did the demo uh for them and they loved it and um the thing is when we did the song a lot of people would do um theme songs they would do them like jangles mm -hmm. you know kind of like commercials um because you know it's not a full song it's only like whatever a minute or so but we purposely did the music i wanted to make it like a song mm -hmm. so we purposely took what we would do as a regular like a, a dance record um and we tried that's what so the song actually starts off with what would be a bridge in a normal song because that was the only way you if you tried to do a regular song by the time you did the intro and first verse it'd be over it so we put the bridge right in the beginning so that part, you can do what you want to do in there. That's like a bridge of a song. And then it goes kind of into the verse, which is the rapping part. And so, but we tried to make it like a, um, a dance, a, like a, a, a dance record of the time. And even more so in the second version, which had the, um, the um, like, this is something for the radio, kind of like the biz sample, which was a hot record at the time. We used the same loop, which came from, um, I think it was Prince, and okay. Cherry Moon. But, yeah. um, you know, we just try to make it fun and try to make it, um like a dance a dance track all right hey and lastly uh i know it was a michael jackson thing that you guys did as well that's another huge piece you just got an exclusive eddie telling you about the other eddie another legendary eddie <laughs> eddie murphy and then you could tell us about what's next what you got uh what you got coming up uh so the michael jackson how did that how did that come about uh you guys so um now, this is told to me by Dio, Damien Blotty. He's one of our high school friends. He, he he was there, actually, at the meeting. I had to leave. I was in L.A. I had to go back to New York because uh, somebody for me was coming out, and I had to go do the remix. And that, back then, you, you couldn't MP3. There was no Pro Tools. You had to be there. So I had to fly back to New York to do the remix or whatever. So I wasn't able to attend the meeting. But, you know, Michael Jackson... Uh, wants to be heavy mm -hmm. so so Damien and Hev they go to the meeting they go to this room and wow. you know excuse the profanity but I'm just gonna <laughs> tell the whole story the way it was mm -hmm. so they're in this room and it's nobody in the room and so they're thinking like Hev is like uh, man it's probably bloopers or something. So he's like, if it's bloopers, you're not gonna be able to use it. So he starts sticking up his middle fingers like, you know, you know, like that, so that they won't be able to like use the bloopers or whatever. Right. So, so this door opens, and a a big like fat guy like with some like you know, looking like um you know some overalls on or whatever, mm -hmm. just looking real like kind of sluggish, comes in, walks by. Mm -hmm. Walks through the room, goes in the other door, comes, goes out the other room, and they and they're like, "Yo, what the?" Like, <laughs> so they really now like, "What's going on?" Right. Come to find out, it was Michael Jackson in disguise. He was in a fat suit, but he came through and just didn't say anything. Went to take off the fat suit or whatever. Wow. So wow. Michael Jackson comes in the room, comes back from where he went out with the suit, and he's like, you know, like heavy. So glad to meet you. I love your music. I love you. One of my favorite rappers. He's like, I want you to, I want you to hear something. Wow. So he opens up this um, like sliding doors, a big system, speakers, everything, cassette deck. So he puts in the tape, and he starts playing the tape, and it's Michael Jackson rapping. He's like, words in the bags and drops. <laughs> and then, so wow. this is the funny part. So he stops the tape. He's all excited. He's like, "Heavy, how do you like it?" And so this is the funny thing. Mm -hmm. So this, and this is how Dio says. So I'm gonna let y'all know. Dio says, "Yo, have told Michael Jackson he was whack." <laughs> so he says, "He says, he says, what do you think about my song?" He says, "Mike, that's whack. You shouldn't be rapping. These be rapping to the to the rappers. You used to sing." He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna fix you. Like, yo, I'm gonna put you with." You know, all my producers, Teddy Riley, DJ ADF, Molly Maul, and he's like, but don't rap. Don't, no right. more rap. <laughs> and no more rap. <laughs> and so, and then Dio's there like, oh, shit, I can't believe that. I have told me who's right, right, right. right. So, so anyway, long story short, um, that's how the whole, you know, 
Teddy thing. And I know there's some other people that also were pushing Teddy, so I don't know if it's all just him, but I know he was one of the first people that actually told Michael Jackson to use him, um, him that he, he should use Teddy. And, you know, then after that, mm -hmm. he did the record with, with uh, Mike. And it's funny, I think, um, I want to say, oh, oh they yeah. bought Shaquem to the video shoot okay. for Jam, right? Right. And Shaquem had on a Naughty by Nature shirt or Naughty by Nature jacket. What? So <laughs> Michael Jackson sees the thing mm -hmm. and says, oh, man, Naughty by Nature, that's one of my favorite groups. So Shaquem gets on the phone. It's like, yo, can't trust yo, y'all get out here in the next flight. So they flies them out. And that's how they ended up in the video. Mm -hmm. They're also in the video. And then when you think about it, OPP is using uh, what you call them, uh, right. ABC. ABC. Yeah, ABC. so wow. he probably he was a fan of um, of the song and the group, and so it's a lot of history there, man. And then after that, obviously, then you know, superstar sister Janet also right. had had one of the song too. Um, Hev was actually the first rapper that was on Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and Janet Jackson. Now, he might be the only one that did both. Right. Right. So wow. Hey, y'all got an exclusive right there. <laughs> Simply Summer Water TV. That's big. Exclusive coming. So, what's up next? What we got going on next, uh, Eddie? Oh, um, man. It's a lot lot going on. I mean, we got the, um, you know, we got the product. We got Simply Soap and Water. You know, uh, you know and for a lot of people who don't know, um, you know, I'm also into, um, you know, I'm doing healthcare consulting. Um, I'm actually... Um, Believe it or not, I'm actually a certified HIPAA compliance officer. Um, I've been consulting as a CTO for a medical group for the last uh, five years or so. Um, and that's one of, you know, I'm still doing music, still mm -hmm. making music. Right. I'm about to put out um, some records now, a uh, project, um, DJ DF Presents, and uh, I have a few artists that I'm working with. Um, also doing some stuff in the tech space, okay. you know. Just getting those, um, getting those, you know, those seven streams of income going. That's you the know, best way. So <laughs> it's, um, there's a lot of things coming. Um, you know, obviously a lot of changes, a lot of things with um, with COVID twenty twenty, a lot of, lot of, you know, disruption. Um, but I, I have some things that, um, you know, thankfully I was, I was somewhat, uh, you know, I was already kind of working remotely, working from home, a lot of um, stuff online. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, you know, to transition um, into, you know, where we are now. But um, a lot of exciting projects coming up. Hey, that sounds very, very awesome. A lot of great things coming up from Eddie F. This was Simply Soap and Soap Water uh, TV here. Uh, what can they? What can you be reached at? Uh, you got an Instagram or Twitter? Yeah, you can uh, reach me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, everything, Facebook is all um, at DJ Eddie F. DJ E D D I E F, and you can get me um, everywhere. Uh, all the social media, I'm on the same handle, DJ Eddie F. All right, signing off. Simply Supplemental TV. Thank you.